Welcome back as we spend a few moments together starting our day, maybe ending our day in the Word of God and being encouraged with the truth of God's Word. Uh, today we are going to be in Philippians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to just encourage us to ponder and reflect upon verse 14, chapter 4, verse 14 of Philippians today. And, and really at verse 14 through the end of the letter, Paul is wrapping up his uh, message to the Philippians. And and yet there's still a lot of really great, important lessons and truth for us to reckon with. We'll see that here in just a moment. First, let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this beautiful morning. I know where where I live, we were threatened and experienced severe weather last night, even tornadoes. And I pray that your mercy and grace would, would comfort and care for those that are in need this morning. I pray, O oh Lord, especially and above all else, that our needs that are met by you in Christ would satisfy our hearts and we would live with gratitude and praise to you. Speak, Lord, now by your, uh, by your, by the Holy Spirit, through your word to our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul says this. At, remember, he's talked about uh, being content and satisfied and, and how we are anchored in Christ in the midst of all these shifting circumstances and on and on and on. Paul says this in verse 14, Yet it was kind of you to share my troubles. Now, what Paul has basically done here in saying that it was kind of you to share my troubles. Paul's saying thank you. And what's incredible about this is in verse 3 of chapter 1 of Philippians, Paul talks about and writes how he thanks God for the Philippians. Now, in this verse 14 of chapter 4, Paul is thanking the Philippians for God's work in and through them, the way that God is ministering to him through them. You know, there's something about being thankful, about being grateful that is really hard, really difficult. As a matter of fact, I, I would say that maybe having a grateful heart and expressing thanks and appreciation is, is one of the more difficult characteristics and, and practices in our life. It, it, it's hard to say thank you, just as it is hard to say I'm sorry. It's hard to say I'm thank you. You know, one uh, one Christian once reflected and said, "What if we have? What if God only gave us today what we thanked Him for yesterday? How much would we have? You know, we really we really could go through our day and constantly say thank you, thank you, Lord, that I opened my eyes this morning." Thank you, Lord, that I have a floor to put my feet on. Thank you, Lord, for running water to brush my teeth. Thank you, Lord, that the coffee maker works this morning. Thank you, Lord, that I have your scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that I have a chair to sit on. Thank you, Lord, that I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, that I have a means of transportation. Thank you, Lord, that this transportation started today. Thank you, Lord, that I have work to go to. Thank you, Lord, for the roads that are secure and safe. Thank you, Lord, for the, the earth earth that I have to live in as a gift from you. Thank you, Lord, for the, the sky above. Thank you, Lord, for the, the air that I can breathe on. Do you see that? How thankful and, and, and the mean or the, the very avenues of thanks that we could offer to God. Paul here closes his letter with expressing his gratitude to the Philippians that their lives have been gripped by the grace of God in Jesus Christ and so transformed that they would live out their love for Christ in the way they would love and care for Paul. Paul is therefore not saying that follow my example, look at me, see how I do this. Paul is upholding the Philippians for us to see a body of people and the church as a whole can be those that live out genuine gratitude. Today is Maundy Thursday. We're in Holy Week. That alone is, is a, a magnificent and enormous reason for us to be thankful that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, innocent and perfect, yet died guilty and, and the bearer of our sin. That by faith in him, through his atoning sacrificial death and resurrection, we might be saved, freed, forgiven, 
Can't we thank God for that too? And maybe that especially. May the Lord move in your heart in such a way that you with eyes and with ears and even then through your lips and your hands, you would live out your genuine gratitude to God for his goodness in your life. May the Lord be with you. I'll see you again tomorrow.